for this demonstration, I'm starting with a pre-created shank, just using my new shank library, just using one of the standard shanks within this. We're going to take a look at the new 2D texture toolpath. Now, how we can use this on a ring. So, in my models area and my plane shank, I'm actually going to come across to my front relief and I'm going to label this shank. Then I'm going to switch over to my 2D view because I'm going to start to do some work with the vectors themselves. I'm going to move these out of the way. And then I'm going to offset this vector inwards. So I'm offsetting this vector inwards by 1.25 millimeter. Then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to unpin this for now. So I'm working on a full screen. And I'm going to enter node editing mode. The node editing mode, I'm going to just insert a midpoint here. So pressing M. M here and M over this side, so I've got midpoints, center, and then one there, 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 and there. So we've got multiple midpoints within our design. And I'm going to just select this node, this node, this node, and this node. And I'm just going to lower them down slightly, just by eye. And then I'm going to select all of my vectors and just smooth them out to create this smooth running curve by using the S key on the shortcut menu. I'm then going to just take a copy of this vector and it using F9. And then just roughly by I, I'm going to just copy these vectors up here to as close to that as I can get. Delete one of the lines. So we have a three wavy curved lines. Now selecting the bottom vector and the top vector, I'm going to right click and just join the vectors with a line. So that's just capped off this end and I'll right click again and join or close the vectors with a line. So it's just capped off both ends. Now they don't quite meet the end of my design, so I'm just going to select these two vec these two nodes here, move them over. I'll take a look over the other side just to check this is okay. It's gone slightly over, we'll just nudge these back. And there we have our wavy curve in which we're going to put a 2D texture within. Now to do this, in my project tab, I'll come across to my 3D view, pin my project tab out, and I'm going to come over and unwrap my ring and turn on my flat plane. I'm also going to turn on my vectors, so my object to draw will be vectors. Here we can see my wavy vectors, and I'm going to just come across to my toolpaths tab, or my actual toolpaths, which is here itself and under 2D toolpath we have a create texture toolpath. So I'm going to select this and we're going to take a look at some of the options for the 2D texture toolpath. Now first of all I'm going to want to use my selected vectors and then I'm going to want to select my tool which is going to be a half millimeter ball nose tool. So a reasonably small tool and I'm just going to use the default values from tool for now. And I'm just going to calculate this. So this is the effect we get when we're just using the default values from that tool. And I'm going to simulate this using my simulation block or my simulation control. If we come over to the side, we can see this is the effect we get if we're just using the default settings. We can change this within the 2D toolpath, the 2D texture toolpath. So we're going to start by working our way through what the changes are. If I just delete my or reset my simulation block and change, turn my vectors back on, reselect them, if I now take a look at my pattern length, 
and change this to 10 and 20 and then recalculate what we will see when we start to simulate this is that the pattern length we get a lot longer strokes so instead of those small little dip in and out what we'll start to get will be these longer carved effects to create a longer texture I quite like this for the ring that we're going for or the effect we're going for quite long carved effect but I don't feel that it's deep enough so if I stop this where it is and reset my simulation underneath in my depth profile I can set this between 0.2 and 1 millimeter and recalculate this but first of all selecting the vectors I require to calculate this toolpath on we should be able to see the difference in the depth which is more appropriate for the ring we're going for so it's recalculated I'm going to re-simulate this and if I turn round to the back view where it's actually cutting from we can see we've got much deeper cuts into our design itself so I'm quite happy with this there are a lot more features within the 2D texture wizard but this will be able to be found in our YouTube channel and also in the ArtCam live area but once this is calculated finished producing I'm going to just save this out as a relief now to do that on my simulation toolbar at the end we have create relief layer so that's now created a relief layer which I'll find by if I come to my project and delete my simulation and delete that toolpath I've created because I'm not interested in that toolpath anymore it's converted it to a relief layer called simulation and we can see that's what we've produced in these wavy areas here is we've pre produced our simulation in the middle now it's quite rough around the edges so if I turn on my vectors so reselect those vectors open my shape editor and delete everything from around it we've got much cleaner edges I'm just going to wrap this around my design just here's my simulation here's my shank itself and if I just select those vectors again and just on my simulation just add a height of 0.5 millimeters maybe it's hiring up or it has hired up my actual simulation so it fits nicely within the shank so turning on my back relief for now so we can see what my ring does look like completed and turn off my vectors so there we have what I want my shank to look like I'm going to see what it looks like out of a material so I'm going to turn on my lighter material and switch this over to gold so we have my nice finished shank 